Hello guys and girls, right, today I am painting a Grey Knight Power Sword, so obviously, see the scale of this thing, it's not one of the infantry, because that would be amazing if the sword was that big, and let's say this is the guy, maybe that's how it should be, <laughs> now Grey Knights are pretty good now, so I don't think they need a helping hand. So, I'm going to do it on a sword this side purely because it's easier to see. So, as you can tell, this sword is already grey. And it might already have a bit of texture to it. So to make a nice, smooth power sword, get the smoothest wet and dry paper you have. So this is grade... Uh, it's 1200. So you could go even, could go even lighter. Uh, maybe 1800. And there's a bit of moisture on there. So a bit of wet and dry, and gently just rub surfaces of the sword so it's nice and perfectly smooth. So you can already see the difference there. Add a little bit more water. A bit of water there. Get it nice and smooth as possible. Just looks nicer when you airbrush it if you can get it as smooth as you can, because why not? It's not like you're using a brush, if you're using a brush to leave behind texture. An airbrush should be ultra smooth. So just like this, on both surfaces, on both sides. So this sword, obviously there's a line in the middle like so. The plan is the mask off one side there and the diagonal side there and then start airbrushing. So we'll start with one side we'll do light at the top and then the diagonal side we'll do the same and we'll make it darker as we go to the, the base of the sword and then once all dry do the complete opposite on the other edges the other faces of the blade Move already, right? The only time consuming bit really on this is make sure when you mask it off it's a nice, perfectly crisp line. So I'll do that now off the camera. I'll get some masking tape, start masking it off. Okay, so I've masked off one and two edges of the sword. By edges, I mean one flat and the exact diagonal. The opposite there. So what I intend to do is make the tip brighter, so a bit of white in my airbrush, making sure it's okay, nice amount of pressure, not too heavy, and just gently start bringing up the tip of the sword. It's white-ish and getting heavier at the end. So a nice little fade there. Do the same here. Cut the same kind of distance down, so nice and heavy at the tip, like so. And I'm going about a third of the way down, so I'll do the same, just making sure it's fairly even. And then the heavy bit on the top. So it should be fairly smooth. Bit more on this one, like so. So should be relatively even. So fairly thick at the top, about a centimeter. Fairly thick at the top, about a centimeter. And then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to hit the bottom with some dark. Okay. So for this, I'm using mostly Game Air by Vallejo, but obviously just. Use your favourite black or use your favourite white, and uh, can't really go wrong. I mean, certain blacks cover better than others, but this will do me fine. So I'm just testing, got a little bit of my bowl. Yeah, it's coming out lovely, so I'm going to do it quite dark at the bottom. Same as the top, a nice 
low gradient and then really really black at the base like so low gradient work it up and really dark there it's covering quite nicely same on this side nice and slow build it up a little bit and heavier there so probably not as much as the top because this is a power sword after all so it's all going to be about energy so the absence of light the dark bit shouldn't be as much as the the light bit so the top was probably about a third's worth of coverage this is probably a quarter at the bottom so not quite as much but there you go that's all you need wait until it dries and then we start picking our blues now you don't have to use blue but i'm using blue because it's fairly traditional with a power sword uh, but you can have some nice fluorescent greens and colors like that something that really really pops so that's what we use okay and this is how far you can push it you can just do it just a little bit of the uh, blue so I'll start off here just in case it's horrible nice and gentle start in the middle and you don't have to go all the way to the ends that far will do so you still a little bit of white at one end a little bit of the dark at the other end so I'll do the same this side so just a little bit there just a little bit there looking fairly nice point until it dries what I'll do is stay slightly darker blue further down but any blue would do just a nice electric real bright blue in my opinion brighter the better there we go we'll leave that to dry Let's see what it looks like okay and if you really wanted to push it a bit harder you could always put a darker strip there so I have just put a little bit of a darker blue there so you could always add a tiny spot of the black just so you've got another stage to fade in so in a minute I'll paint the tip of the, the sword really really white and I'll do all the edge highlighting so it'll be really white semi white blue 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 dark blue to black and then we'll do the same thing on the other blade and see what it looks like and I'll put this on camera so you can see my utter failure when the paint rips off so I didn't press the mask and tape on there too hard of course you can use proper hobby mask and tape but I've uh, took the sticky off a little bit this mask and tape I was just gently rubbing it away so doesn't look so good there careful 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 oh it's fine we're good we're okay look at that just make sure to clean the sticky stuff off obviously when you spray it out so that's always the bit that makes you cringe a little bit when you pull the tape off Brilliant, okay. So I'll tidy this up, get rid of the glue, and mask up for round two. Okay, so once this side's all masked up, we paint it in the exact opposite way we did before. So, black at the top, so make sure whatever black you're using, it's nice and gentle. And gently. Down. And then stick here as we go. So just like that. Gently down. And stick it at the top. Gently. Just like so. 
Okay, so then we get the white and we'll do the bottom just like before. Good old airbrush is kicking in there. Right, so next we get our white, whatever white we like. Make sure it's nice and smooth. So I always test it first because, and with the tape around, I always test it on the tape as well. You should never know when it might dribble. So nice and gentle, and it gets a harder white there. Okay, so you should leave yourself just a, I would say probably about a quarter of a strip or something like that in the middle where the blue is going to be and then it will merge into the white and merge into the black and that will obviously affect the colour of your blue. Nice and gentle, up to about there, really hard white there. Now you could always wait until it dries and then hit that white a bit harder again. Same with the black, wait until it dries, hit that black harder again. But I'm reasonably happy with that coverage there. So I'll leave the whole thing to dry for a second, hit the blue, and I won't bore you with the details. I'll only get to the reveal. And then you can see what it's like. We'll do the edge highlights to finish it off with a little bit of white to make it really pop. Okay, and that's what you get when you pull the tape off on both sides. So you should get a fairly smooth transition, um, but if you pull the tape off too hard, you'll get something like that. And you can see that the white was pulling underneath the tape a little bit. If your tape is too strong, you'll get glue and tape residue left on the blade. And that's not what you want, because you want a perfectly smooth blade. Hence, that's why we use the wet and dry paper. But it's okay because we want to do an edge highlight now to make this sword pop just a little bit more. I'm going to do a white edge highlight on the tip all the way down the crease of the blade and on the inside area. Once that's dry, you could always put a little bit more white on the tip, make sure it pops just a little bit more. So we will do that now. So I'm using an airbrush white because I don't want it a bit too, too glary initially. So it's always Nice to add a little bit at first and then obviously add more if you like. So, with a relatively small brush. So this is a uh, double zero. I'm just going to get a little bit of my brush on the palette. And we'll do the edge highlight. So, lean against the sword. And make it as neat as possible. And just gently go along the crease of the blade. You can always tidy it up if necessary afterwards. So really using the side of the brush initially. If you do go over a little bit, because it's an airbrush paint, you can just, you can see how much I'm shaking guys. <laughs> just tease it off, just a little bit of water and work it off just like so so it makes it pop just a little bit more like so I'm going to do around the, the inside edges here just give it that power feel, you know, it's glowing, it's emanating power. Same the other way around, turn the blade round. Hopefully it ties everything together. This is the theory behind it, but if you uh, if you don't shake as much as me, 
you should have a nicer blade than that. Now remember, you can use whatever colours you like. You can use a nice fluorescent green, maybe. I'm just using a normal blue by Vallejo. I'm not using like an electric blue, nothing too crazy. And I normally go just as far as the, the shoulder of the blade. If you want to go all the way down, it's totally fine as well. So there we go. Even though I'm quite shaky, that's not a bad blade. So that's the, the basics of how I do a power sword with an airbrush. Let me know what you think guys. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching.